Hello everyone, we are on our connective tissues and we're going to talk about all the different types of connective tissues. There's a wide variety, there, there's a lot of different functions out there, so let's go through some of that. Um, when I, as we go through, I want you to remember that they are, even though there's a lot of differences between them, they're all in the same category. So that must mean that they all have some similar characteristics as well. And so let's look at the similar characteristics that are for all of the different types of connective tissue. So the best thing, the easiest thing, and it all kind of boils down to the presence of lots and lots of extracellular matrix. And what I mean by extracellular matrix is anything that is not a cell, anything that is non-living between the cells. So those are things like fibers, and the two types of fibers that I would like you to know are collagen fibers and elastic fibers. The collagen fibers are going to be thick and usually lighter staining. So these pink ones here that are thick and lighter staining, those would be the collagen. So collagen here and here and here. And the elastic fibers, those are going to be dark and thin and kind of wiry. Those are elastic fibers. Okay, so they're not living, they're just made up of uh, proteins coming together to make long strings, long filaments. So those are extracellular matrix. And it also includes things like plasma, which is the liquid part of blood, and things like ground substance, which is like a jelly-like substance that's found between cells. Okay, so basically anything that's not a cell, anything that is not living, that's going to be called extracellular matrix and connective tissue has a lot of that. The other thing is they are vascularized. If we remember back to epithelial tissues, which are avascular, that, that means that they do not have blood vessels. So connective tissues are vascularized, which just means they have blood vessels. So there'll be blood vessels running through them and that'll be important because what comes with blood? Nutrients and oxygen and all of the things that cells need. Okay, so you'll see there's a lot of connective tissues surrounding other types of tissues so that they can get the nutrients and the oxygens that, that they need. Okay, and also not polar, what I just mean by that, there's no apical or basal surface. If I turn this picture upside down, it would look kind of the same, right? So there's no, there's no polarity for those connective tissues. Okay, biggest piece though is lots and lots of extracellular matrix, things that are not cells. Okay, the other common characteristic of all of the co uh, connective tissues is that they all come from the same embryonic tissue, which is called mesenchyme. They're all derived from that mesenchyme. And so when, when you think about all of the different types of tissues, it's kind of interesting to think back, well, they all came from the same type of tissue in the embryonic stage, and that is mesenchyme. So make sure you are familiar with that term as well. Okay, so I'm gonna to start to go through the specific types of connective tissues that I want you to know. And it, sometimes it feels a little bit overwhelming because there's a lot of different types and there's kind of a lot of variety over there. So remember that you want to provide structure for yourself. So one way to provide structure is to create a, a tree like this. So this is just a tree diagram. We start with something broad and then you go kind of towards the specific. So broad to specific as you study is always a good idea. So one way that you can organize it is by general function. So when you look at the connective tissue, you can group them into two major categories. We have what's called connective tissue proper. And so why do you think they're called connective tissue proper? It's actually easier than it sounds like. They're called that because their job is to literally connect tissues. That's what they do. So these are tissues that are gonna connect one tissue type to another tissue type. So they're connected tissue proper. And then we have some specialized ones that have some other functions. Within that, you can categorize another one so for example, bone and cartilage. So thinking, let's maybe think about bone because most of us are familiar with that. What's the general function of bone in our bodies? It provides shape and structure and support, 
right? So the bone and the cartilages, those are going to provide structure and support for our body. And then the last one, which is all by its lonesome, that is blood. What's the general function of blood? Why do we have blood? It carries stuff, okay? So it's for transport. So blood is a connective tissue. It has lots of extracellular matrix in the form of plasma. And so, and, and it's derived from mesenchyme. So yes, it is a connective tissue. Okay, so let's start with connective tissue proper. I'm gonna, that's what we'll be talking about for the rest of this little video. And then for my next little video, I'll go into the specialized connective tissues. For the connective tissue proper, this, the, once you have that main category, I like to then separate it into connective tissue proper loose and then dense. Now, look at this picture right here. So these two are, are, are considered connect, uh, examples of loose connective tissue. So visually speaking, why do you think they're called loose? There's a lot of space. They're not dense, right? They're, there's a space between things. So they are loose. And the two ones that I want you to know are loose areolar connective tissue and loose adipose connective tissue. Okay, so one thing I'd like you to put, um, look at for this one here, anytime you have, look at something and it reminds you of something from your own experiences, it'll help you remember and kind of tie it to your, you know, to that experience and that'll help, help it stick in your brain. So for me, when I look through, if I look through a microscope, I look at a picture of loose adipose connective tissue, it reminds me of very delicate little soap bubbles. And so that's what I call it myself. So I, if it looks like soap bubbles, that's the loose adipose connective tissue. So you always want to try to tie information with what you already know with the, your own experiences and that will help you remember. Okay, so let's actually start with loose areolar connective tissue. It's loose, there's lots of spaces in there and it does have cells. Most, the most common cell is going to be the fibroblast. And the blasts are gonna be cells that, do, that produce something, that make something. And in this case, they make, what do you think? Fibroblasts make fibers, okay? So those fibroblasts are gonna make the fibers, specifically, especially the collagen fibers that are found in that loose areola connective tissue. Those are the fibroblasts, and those are, that's going to be one the cell type that you're going to need to label for lab. You also have some other types of uh, immune cells in there. Those are not going to necessary for labeling for lab because they're kind of hard to differentiate to distinguish them from the fibroblasts in in the slides. So, but I do want you to know that they're there. So we have the white blood cells here, for example, that those are gonna be for the immune system. And then you also have things that are like macrophages, which are an immune cells, but they're specifically phagocytic immune cells, which means they eat stuff, they eat debris, they eat pathogens. Okay. And then, yes, yeah, so the extracellular matrix for this one is predominantly fibers. And remember the thick is collagen, thick light staining one, fibers are collagen, and the thin kind of wiry dark ones, those are going to be elastic fibers. Okay, for the loose areola connective tissue, it is called proper. It's one of the proper ones. With, so what's the function of them? They, its job is literally what it sounds like to connect tissues. And one of the places that you can find the cellular connective tissue is in the lamina propria. The lamina propria just refers to the connective tissue that binds the epithelial tissue to other types of tissue. So basically it's the glue that holds on that epithelial tissue so that it's connected to the, the tissue, to the organ. Okay, so that's the loose areolar connective tissue. Do you remember what the second one was? It also starts with a loose adipose connective tissue. So from here on out, for the end of time, anytime you hear the word adipo or something related to adipose, that I want you to tie that directly to the word fat. That's what it is, it's fat tissue. 
okay? So loose adipose connective tissue. Now we call it loose because when you look at it, it kind of looks loose. Remember I called this the soap bubbles, but in reality, it has a lot of cells. It's just that those cells are rather large and they have what's called a fat globule inside. So you have a fat vacuole that's filled with a big fat blob inside of the cells. And so when you look at them, they kind of look empty, but really they're just filled with fat. And then they're so filled with fat that the nucleus is going to be pushed off to the side. So they kind of create a little ringlet shape. So I kind of think of like a ring, right? So you have the top right here. This would be where the nucleus is. And this area here that looks empty, this is where the fat vacuum would be, and that would be where the fat is stored. That's the big fat globule. So when you look at it, so this whole thing from here to here, that's one cell. A common misunderstanding that I get all the time is that people tend to think, well, here, there's a nucleus, that's where the cell is. No, the whole thing, all the way across, that's one adipocyte. Okay, so remember, site means cell. Site means cell. So on your prefix, on your little root list, make sure you put that on there because that's going to show up a lot of time. So we have adipo, fat, site, cell, so fat cell. Okay, so the whole length across, that's one adipocyte. Okay, so let's look at the, some of the functions of adipose tissue. So remember that you, um, even though we kind of think of fat as something that's bad, like we don't want fat at all, and that is just not accurate, we need fat. Fat does a lot of important functions in our bodies. The biggest is obviously just a, an energy reserve. It's, um, studies have been shown that uh, inner, you know, fat stores improves your chances of surviving a serious illness, right? So you need that energy storage, sort of a backup. They also do things like thermal regulation, that little layer of fat, especially for example, here's the greater omentum, it's just covered in fat, that little will, will provide some insulation to help protect the organs from changes in temperature and things like shock absor absorption, somebody punches you in the stomach, get a little shock absorption there. And they also pack and store around organs. And for example, if you're looking at this picture here, this is in the back wall of the um, of a cat's stomach. So here's the abdominal cavity. You take all of the organs, kind of push them off to the side, so the liver, intestines off to the side. Remember that the kidneys were retroperitoneal, which means they are behind the parietal peritoneum. So there are the kidneys, and you can even you can barely see the kidneys, and the reason for that is because packed around those kidneys is the loose adipose connective tissue. And anytime you see this kind of yellowish substance, that's at loose adipose connective tissue. Okay, so lots and lots of fat tissue here. Um, so it, that, that fat helps protect and package and keeps those uh, kidneys in place. And in fact, one of the dangers of anorexia, you know, not eating, is that if you don't have enough of that fat to pack the kidneys, sometimes the kidneys can drop and that's dangerous, right? So yes, fat, don't want too much fat, you know, but you definitely, you definitely need some fat. It's important for your body. So again, adipo, fat, the loose adipose connective tissue, your fat tissue. Okay, on to connective tissue proper fence. So if the previous ones were loose because there's lots of space, the dense ones are going to be dense because they're densely packed. And what they're densely packed with is collagen. Okay, so there's two that I want you to know. There's dense regular connective tissue and there's dense irregular connective tissue. So when we look at this here, see these, these kind of wavery fibers here? The, that is the collagen. It also has cells kind of stuck between it, the fibroblasts stuck between them, but mostly you just see tons and tons of collagen. Okay, so looking at this picture here and looking at this picture here, what do you think the difference between dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue is? How do they look different? 
Okay, so what you're going to look at is the collagen fibers. For dense regular connective tissue, they're called dense regular connective tissue because those collagen fibers are all running parallel together. So they're all facing the same direction. So they're all nice and neat and regular. Whereas the irregular connective tissue, see all of this pink stuff? That's actually collagen too. But the collagen is choppy and oriented in lots and lots of different directions. So it kind of looks like you stuck it in a blender and it's all mixed up together. Okay? So the next thing that I want to talk about well, was why. why. Why do you have one tissue where all the collagen's in the same oriented in the same way and then another tissue we're all different places okay so it has to do with where do you find each one for the dense regular connective tissue you're going to find those in thing in so they are proper so their function is still to connect and what they do is they connect for example muscles to bones those are called tendons so tendons connect muscles to bone, so skeletal muscles to bone tissue. And then you have ligaments, and ligaments connect bones to other bones. And then you have aponeuroses, and aponeuroses connect, are, are pretty much the same as ligaments, sorry, sorry to say, pretty much the same as tendons because you're connecting muscles to bones. But the difference is instead of being a, a skinny cord-like structure, they're flat sheets. Okay, so think about it this way. Let's look at this, this right here first. So let's look at these tendons. These tendons connect those skeletal muscles to the bones so that when the skeletal muscle contracts, it's going to pull the bone towards it, right? So when you think about the stresses, the forces that are placed on that tendon, all of the, all of the forces are gonna be in one single direction, right? So the muscle is only going to pull it in one single direction. So you want to make sure that all your strength is oriented in that one single direction. So all of those collagen fibers are going to be oriented in the same direction so that they all resist and all have the same strength in one direction. Okay, so unidirectional strength, maximum strength in the direction that it is required, in the direction that the muscle would be pulling or the bones would be pulling. Okay, whereas the dense irregular connective tissue, those are going to be found, the best, the best places they found in the dermis, which is the middle layer of your skin, right? So if you look at your skin, you got your epithelium at the top, that's the epidermis. Underneath that, all of this kind of pinkish, medium pink color, this is the dermis, and the dermis is going to be largely made up of the dense irregular connective tissue. And that, that collagen in the skin allows for multiple different moving around, right? So multi-strength organism multi-strength because now you have the collagen fibers oriented in multiple different directions and that allows for stretching and kind of recoiling back in a multiple different ways and one thing that i kind of wanted to mention because it's a little bit interesting to me is one of the things that happens as you age is you have less and less to collagen the collagen is not replaced as quickly or it's damaged by uv light and that's what caught one of the major factors for causing the drooping skin because it doesn't have that same recoil the same multi-directional strength okay so kind of two similar or two similar tissues, but different functions in different locations, and so they're going to have a different structure. Okay, so I want you to understand how the structure of the collagen relates to the function of that tissue. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it, and I'll come back and we'll talk about those specialized connective tissues.